so <coughs> when kriyas you know it is a j shaped gland it's a j shaped gland okay okay so it's just j shaped gland and this you know it surrounds the duodenum like this it surround the head of the pancreas is is like you know the head of the pancreas is kept within this sorry it's within this loop of the duodenum and you know this portion here it's the uncinase process the head the body of pancreas and this is the tail of the pancreas which reaches to the spleen there got it okay then <clears throat> i don't want to go into the gross anatomy right now we have to focus upon the histology so we got its location it's like retroperitoneal in structure located behind the stomach behind the you can see the lesser sac of the peritoneum then this pancreas histologically you know it's actually classified in glands it's a mixed gland that means it has both exocrine and endocrine components <coughs> so the exocrine component that forms you know exocrine components developed from the pancreatic bud okay. both from ventral and, pan and dorsal pancreatic bud that develops into the exocrine portion now exocrine portion forms the you know tubulo alveolar compound tubulo alveolar type of gland compound tubulo alveolar type of gland is oh uh, no compound tubulo alveolar gland compound tubular alveolar gland is yep no yes so compound tubular alveolar gland will be like you know yes hold on yes so no look carefully that these are small acini these are small acini these small acini have their ducts okay these ducts are the ducts from the acini then they form interlobar ducts interlobar ducts similarly there will be lobe here also like here also these ducts join similarly ducts the acini from different lobules they join to form the interlobar ducts now there will be similarly acini from the other side also like this right so these ducts they are interlobar ducts interlobular ducts interlobular ducts join to form intercalated ducts like you know this this portion is a lobule right this is a lobule so similarly when the ducts with them when they are until they are within the lobule they are interlobular ducts then they come out from the lobule they form inter lobular ducts interlobular ducts join to form intercalated ducts like be here also it might be here also right so from different lobules they join to form intercalated ducts now this one is the intercalated ducts so these intercalated ducts from different portions they join to form a larger duct called the interlobar ducts the interlobar ducts from all that also from different parts the gland they form the interlobar ducts lobular ducts interlobar ducts they join to form the 
main duct and that you know that main duct opens along with the cbt on along with the bile duct form along with the common bile duct to open at the second part of the duodenum on the less on the inner curvature that's called the ampulla of water or ampullary papillae right so the two ducts join to open at the ampulla in the second part of the duodenum there you have sphincter of od now with the histology when you will see these acini <coughs> these acini they are actually these acini they are actually you know made up of simple squamous epithelium right these are actually they're not simple squamous they are they are simple cubical epithelium in the resting stage right so in the resting stage they are simple cubical epithelium now these cells if you'll see if you cut it and then you'll see that they are they are made up of these ducts you can say that they are made up of pyramidal cells they are acini or alveoli the difference is that in an acini you will find larger cells the cells are larger pyramidal with less amount of luminal space and in alveoli you have more more of cells surrounding with larger larger luminal space then each of these cells you have you know you have a basal nucleus you have a nucleus there in the base flattened nucleus as i have been telling you like all the serous cells in the salivary glands or any other exocrine glands they flattened nucleus and of course the other things inside you know they also have the endoplasmic reticulum a lot of endoplasmic reticulum in the bases right and of course the secretory element the zymogen granules the zymogen granules you will find towards the apical or the luminal surface these zymogen granules are loaded in the luminal or apical surface of the glands <coughs> and <coughs> they take good of stain because the exocrine the vasophilic stains they take up well with these granules so that you have been you know told in the salivary glands also that these salivary glands the zymogen granules how this made up of this these cells are made up of these nitrogenous bases so they take good of stain okay so then the rest of it is you know that these interlobular intercalated interlobar ducts they are all made up of simple cubical epithelium this is all made up of simple cubical epithelium and here the intercalated ducts they will of course have a size bigger than the rest of the epithelium and the rest of the ducts they have larger cells and might be in the main you know in the main duct they'll have tall columnar cells in the lining of the main ducts tall columnar cells so that is how the exocrine portion of the pancreas is made up of okay then 
then now we will talk about the endocrine portion right so when you will see in the cut section of a slide in a cut section you will find that in a cut section you will find that you will find there are lots of SE9 now these are exocrine SE9 in a cut section right in a pancreas in a transverse section this is how it will appear loaded with SE9 now it's because it depends on the section you might not all see them all in an equal or in a circular manner you might be cut obliquely also so this is how you find the se9 right okay and about the se9 i have already told you that you have the cells lining right yes like this These are also SE9. This is all I told you before. Okay. Now, in between, you will also fall into cut sections of some ducts. Let's say you have seen is uh, the ducts. You might also find ducts here. Ducts. You can also find some ducts running here. Here are there some ducts, the line. So you will have to, you know, identify, get them differentiated from blood capillaries. Blood capillaries also will be there, right? So now let's talk about the islets of Langerhans. They are the exocrine component of the pancreas. The exocrine component, uh, let's say we're using this, right? Uh, the exocrine components are like clusters of cells. These are clusters of cells located in between the exocrine component. These are the islets of Langerhans. Now, islet of Langerhans they are not made up of single type of cells they have lots of different types of cells look here they have eyelids sorry eyelids the eyelid of langerhans they have alpha 1 type of cells also called D cells you have alpha 2 alpha 2 cells and you have beta cells now alpha cells alpha 1 cells they secrete alpha 1 cells they secrete you know gastrin and serotonin alpha 2 cells these are like very the least amount of cells you will find is this the minimum amount of very scanty cells alpha 2 cells they are less in number around 15 to 20 percent of the cells population is made up of alpha 2 cells and they are the one who secrete glucagon glucagon the majority the most prominent cell type is beta cells which are around which are around 80 percent now these beta cells <coughs> beta cells they secrete insulin Obviously, you will not get a single, with a single stain, you will not be able to see all of them. So, you need a special stains to visualize each different type of cells. Like in case, like in case, if you have to identify 
the alpha 2 cells then for this alpha 2 cells stains the stain the stain used for alpha 2 cells is acid phosgene acid phosgene and for beta cells it is orange G or Gomori's aldehyde first gene so these are special stains like in case if you have to send a patient from diabetes type 1 a person suffering from diabetes type 1 for referential for informative diagnosis you might even need to have a, a pancreatic biopsy to so the biopsy specimen to confirm the presence of or absence of the number of beta cells you need to have to identify the beta cell population and for that you can use these you know special stains for the beta cells these are orange g or gomori's aldehyde first g okay so like this the red color cells which i have drawn the red color cells which i have drawn here let's say these are the beta cells so in the same in the same population of cells you can also draw you can also draw that it also has mixed population of cells around 15 to 20 percent of the cell population is made up of alpha 2 yes alpha 2 cells alpha 2 cells and you can also add up a few cells of alpha 1 type secrete gastrin and serotonin 5 ht hydroxy tryptamine okay so these are the different types of cells so in a slide in a slide you can find this is how it will appear and the most important thing before i forget you should also remind me that this specimen wherever you find eyelids there you will also find yes blood capillary surrounding you know these are ductic supine endocrine is a ductless gland so you don't have ducts to carry their secretions so that's why they are surrounded by capillaries then these are the blood capillaries surrounding the exocrine portion of the pancreas got it okay so this is not only the four cells 